Hello, welcome back to Physics One course. We're going to be calculating vector components. This is part two of the set of problems where we're learning how to calculate vector components. I think one of the best ways to get a lot of practice with this is let's go ahead and solve four problems in this section. They're all really short. What I want to do is decompose a vector in each of the four quadrants of the plane. So each of the four quadrants will do four different vectors, one pointing in each of the different directions so that you can see what the different components look like when the vector is pointed in, in different directions. So the first one um, is going to be, let's do number, let's call it number one, and we'll do it where uh, the, let's see, how am I want to do this? One, two, three, four, yeah, we'll do it like that. So we'll have a, a XY plane like this, as we always do. And then we will go ahead and draw, let's go ahead and draw the vector in uh, purple here, and let's draw it in quadrant number one, and let's make it easy. Let's draw this at 45 degree angle. So the vector A has a magnitude of 13, could be meters, could be meters per second if it's velocity, could be newtons if it's force, which we'll talk about later, could be whatever for a magnetic field, whatever. It's some arrow with a unit of 13 uh, long, and the angle here is 45 degrees. Now before we do anything, because you know that this is at 45 degrees, once we calculate the x portion of the component and the y portion of the component, because it's a 45 degree angle, the x and y components will be equal because the thing is splitting the difference. You see I've drawn it splitting the difference at 45 degrees between x and y. So the x and y component we strongly suspect should be the same. So what you need to do is, we're going to draw a picture at the end, but I want you to get used to visualizing it in your mind. Okay? What we want to do is we want to take this vector and want to break it up into a vertical component, and then separately from that we want to break it into a horizontal component. Right? So how much of it is this way and how much of it is this way? So in order to find the uh, horizontal component, remember, horizontal component deals with cosine, the adjacent side of this triangle here. You've got to envision in your mind a triangle here like this. So to find the AX component, right, we just take the hypotenuse, 13, which is the length of this thing, 13, and when we're trying to find the X component, that goes along with cosine. Cosine of what? Cosine of 45 degrees. So you don't really need to redraw the triangle all the time. You're going to get used to the idea of multiplying here. You chop it with a cosine and gives you that horizontal projection. So that AX is going to be equal to 13. You take the cosine of 45, you get 0 0.707 in your calculator. That's a truncation. It really goes on with more decimals uh, there. But the AX component is 9.19. 9.19 what? Well, it depends on if it was meters, it'd be 9.19 meters. If it was meters per second, it'd be meters per second. I haven't even given you any units here, so we're just going to leave it alone at 9.19. And then we're going to go over here, let's switch colors, and find the Y component. A sub Y vector, what is it going to be? It's going to be the length of the vector itself, the hypotenuse 13, and we're chopping it to find the Y component, so that's going to be a sine, the opposite of this angle, sine of 45 degrees. Now when you go in your calculator, and you might remember this from trig also, the cosine of 45 and the sine of 45 is actually the exact same thing. Why? Because this angle exactly bisects the x and the y axis, so the sine and the cosine give you the same thing, 707. So what you get for y, a y, is exactly the same thing as we had before, 9.19. Could be meters, whatever. So our prediction was true. When you get a calculator and multiply all these numbers together, the x component, which is the projection along the x-axis, and the y component, which is the projection along the y-axis, are the same. The only reason they're the same in this problem is because 45 degrees exactly splits this 90 degree